Okay, hey guys, today we're talking medieval cookbooks. That's coming up. guys, uh, about a year ago I was inspired by a good friend of mine to start categorising my research books. I've got a relatively extensive library, uh, it covers two complete bookshelves and then some. <clears throat> and uh, I thought I'd start to share some of that with you. So it's, it's actually not a bad idea. For those of you who are really into medieval reenactment, there's some really good resources here. I find it's really important to be able to share some of our knowledge uh, with especially newer people to, to reenactment and guide them on their journey through through the reenactment process. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's get into it. The Mead Hall by Stephen Pollington. This is less of a um, recipe book per se, much more of a book ab about the culture of food, so to speak. Um, because food plays such a massive, massive role in all human culture. It is, uh, I guess, part of the platform that we share so many of our experiences and so much of our lives with our friends and our family and our associates and uh, people that come to visit us and so on. So um, really, really good book to read. I think it's a great resource. Definitely recommend it. The Cast Iron Skillet by Sharon Kramis. This is probably probably less of a medieval book per se, but it is a really good book to have because especially for those of you who are into um, the, the LARPing and the SCA side of the house, um, this gives you a really good idea on a whole bunch of different meals that can be cooked out of a simple skillet pan. Um, really do recommend that. Um, and this is all of $25. I think I actually paid less than that when I bought it. So there we go, guys. Really good recommendation. The Medieval Kitchen by Hanel Clemita. I do apologize if I've got the pronunciation wrong there. Uh, this book covers a whole range of different eras, I guess, from early medieval right through until later medieval. It's interesting because it covers a lot of the uh, herbs and the spices and the roots and those sorts of things that people use to cook with and I think it's a great resource to have not that expensive at around 25 pounds sterling medieval taste by Massimo Monterio really good book to read this covers a lot of the history of food uh, and I think it's really good uh, from the point of view that, um, again, it's another one of these books that really does explore kind of the history of food and its place in our lives and societies and cultures. Really good recommendation. Medieval Cooking in Today's Kitchen by Greg Jenkins. Really good read for around about $25. Does cover some really good recipes. I like it. It's a simple, it's a compact book. Uh, it's easy to read. Very, e very easy to follow and there's some really good illustrations as well. Uh, I like it. I think it's a, a, a really good resource to have. The Medieval Cook by Bridget Hanash. I like this book. I really do. Um, again, focusing more so on the culture than anything uh, around food, but it's, it's really interesting. I think it's, it's well written, it's well scripted, and it, it just gives that very easy to read kind of notion of the book. Medieval Holidays and Festivals by Madeline Cosman. I paid all of £3 sterling for this, roughly $6 Australian. Um, really, really great book. It's so interesting because medieval people didn't have watches and iPads and all this kind of stuff. So a lot of their day-to-day -day life, a lot of their kind of the, their calendar was in fact marked by celebrations throughout the year and progressed towards 
for much bigger celebrations at the end of the year with the Christian calendar. Uh, really interesting book. Um, and it, it covers a whole range of different celebrations that took place in the medieval world right across each month. Fantastic book to read. Medieval Celebrations by Mark Donnelly. Uh, great book, not just about food. It also covers a lot of the pastimes and the games and the fun and the different things that, that medieval people did. Uh, because so many people, I guess, look at what's portrayed in the history, uh, what's portrayed in movies and TV shows and stuff like that. And aside from the battles, you don't actually get to see a whole lot. Which is a real shame because the, I think the battles actually only made up a very small fragment of medieval life. This book really does cover a whole lot more and I really do recommend this book. Anglo-Saxon Food and Drink by Anne Hagen. One of my favourite cookbooks. Um, really, really is. It's it definitely my, I think, my one of my favourite books around medieval food and drink. It's, it's fantastic. Um, covers so much information, really, truly not that expensive, £15 sterling, roughly $30 Australian. Um, I think this is a great book to have. It covers not just um, the food and the preparation of food, it covers drink, it covers um, the land, it talks about livestock, it talks about so much more than just the actual food that we eat. It is a fantastic read and I so recommend this book. Another book by Anne Hagen, this one is called Anglo-Saxon Food Processing and Consumption. Um, again, cannot recommend this book enough. This is, is such a great book to have and it, it covers so much more than just um, the actual food and the drink. It talks about the, um, why certain foods were only consumed on certain days and there's just so much in these two books by Anne Hagen. I, I thoroughly recommend her. She is a great author. It's an easy to read book. And for those of you who have the time, and I think we all have a lot of time on our hands at the moment, this is such a great book to have. Anglo-Saxon Food and Drink by Anne Hagen. This is the third of her books. Cannot recommend this enough. There's so much information in her books. I, I really think she's done a marvellous, marvellous job. Food and Drink in Anglo-Saxon England by Debbie Bannum. Great book to have. This also goes in, not so much a recipe book, but it certainly goes into a lot about the production of food um, and where food came from and how food was made and processed. Truly recommend this book. My last and possibly most favourite book for the early medieval period is An Early Meal by Daniel Serra and Hannah Thurnbook. Such a great book, very, very easy to read. There's some great recipes in this book. For those of you who are going out on encampments and so on, <coughs> or who are lucky enough to be going out on encampments because all of that's been shut down in where I live in Australia, there are some really great, fascinating reads in this book, and I truly, truly, truly recommend it. Uh, Okay guys, there we go. I'm going to put all of these books in the description in the video on YouTube. I really hope to, um, to hear from you. What's your favourite medieval meal? Leave that in the comments below. Really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video. What's your favourite... Uh, what's your favourite medieval cookbook? I'd love to hear from you. Leave that in the comments below.